What does an Air Force veteran and a Navy veteran want a former professional WCW wrestler and the other a 20-year business owner have in common? They're a dynamic real estate duo. Now, here's your next episode of the Bortz Real Estate Team Podcast. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the final episode of 2018 for the Bortz Real Estate Team Podcast. I'm Chuck Bortz. And I'm Anne-Marie Bortz, and we are the Bortz Real Estate Team. First, we want to wish everyone out there a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. Yes, Merry Christmas. As always, we ask you to visit our website, BortzRealEstateTeam.com. And also, please visit us on Facebook and Instagram, and don't forget to like our page. Our Facebook page is Bortz Team Real Estate Agents, and on Instagram, we are Bortz Team underscore Realtor. There are also show notes for each episode of the podcast, so if you need to get a link or access information we discuss during this or any episode, you can find that on our website. And again, that website is BortzRealEstateTeam.com. So before we get started, babe, um, it's holidays, as we just said. Are you ready? I am. What'd you get me? Oh, you almost got me to tell you. (laughs) That means he hasn't thought of anything yet. (laughs) All right. Even though it's the holidays, people are still buying and selling real estate. So today we're going to discuss with you guys how to prepare your home for a home inspection. You'd be surprised how many contracts fall apart due to a lackluster home inspection report. In fact, we just had one recently on one of our listings. And so we thought that would be a great time to bring this as a topic in our podcast. Yeah. And even though there are measures or things that you can do to try uh, to take after the fact to salvage the transaction, it would be better to be more prepared for the home inspection and not have to go through renegotiation, so to speak. Right, with the buyer. And if you're the seller, you want to try as much to keep your contract intact. So with that being said, we're going to start by explaining to you the sales and purchase contract. Most real estate contracts are written in Florida without a repair clause, which means it's an as-is contract. But there's a little caveat with that. It is as is with the right to inspect for the buyers. Correct. And that's the important part with the right to inspect. And though in theory, this seems like a good idea and a good thing to have such a contract for a seller and buyer, it depends on your home's condition. This contract could be an absolute disaster if you are someone who unfortunately didn't take the time to do repairs and maintain the property. Yeah. And it's It's important that sellers have a complete understanding of what this means to them before they even put their home on the market. Okay. So let's go back a little bit in time before the real estate boom. So we're talking pre-2003. Yeah. It was typical to see repair clauses. I know in South Florida, my first home I bought had a repair clause. Mm -hmm. And it's a contract which, in essence, is limited or limit, limits the amount of repairs, typically 1% or 2% of the contract sales price. That's a seller that a seller would be obligated to make following an inspection. Right. And the good thing about that type of contract, which is one with repair clause, is that it kind of locks in the buyer, so to speak. So even if the inspection report found issues, as they will, I mean, no home is perfect. Even the brand new home, you're going to find something. And that's why they have a punch out list. But even if the inspection report found issues, as long as the cost to repair was within that repair percentage that Chuck just mentioned, typically one or two percent in the contract between the buyer and the seller, the buyer was obligated to continue forward with the purchase of the property and in the contract. And the seller was obligated to make those repairs. So in essence, it did kind of keep the contract and the buyer and seller committed, so to speak. Yeah. Now, however... Due to some unscrupulous inspectors, now there wouldn't be that in Florida, would there? Oh, no. Okay. (laughs) That had very bad business practices. Sellers started to distrust the inspection reports and they felt as if they were being gouged financially. Right. Now, it's important that everybody listen, keep in mind that this was before the dawn of the digital 
age and cameras that could take photos instantly. You can see them. God kind of dates us, huh? Because, you know, we're not talking Polaroids or the ones you had to go print, which is what it was when I first got into real estate 18 years ago. Digital cameras were not around. And so inspection reports were basically all written verbiage. There were no visual pictures to aid in showing the authenticity and the accuracy of the errors that the inspector was being um, up front and saying was wrong. So what we were finding were buyers were starting to say, well, how do I know this is wrong? How do I know right. that you're not making that up to make me have to come down more on the price of the home? Exactly. And so that type of thinking, and as Chuck said, bad business practices led up to the popularity of the as is sales and purchase contract. Yes. And the as is contracts are now pretty much the norm here in, in the state of Florida. Though you will find homes of substantial worth still using a contract with a repair clause. Right. So we're talking homes typically over half a million and up. They typically will want a repair clause. Um, and it's so it's pretty much norm. It's to be expected. But that doesn't mean that they can't use an as is because it's you know going to be whatever you negotiate between a buyer and seller. Now, some people see that this is an easy way out for the buyer if they change their mind about buying a home. But if the buyer is serious, they will have already spent upwards of, you know, $400 on a home inspection, maybe four to six. Um, based at, on the size of the home. Yeah, based on the square foot of the home. Right. So the buyers will have some skin in the game, meaning they will have some investment. Typically, you won't lose a buyer for minor issues, especially after they've invested money for a home inspection. Most homeowners, meaning sellers, really have no clue what shape or condition their home is in and how what they perceive and think is nothing, you know, wrong with the property is something that will cause a buyer to reject the home and thereby exercise their right to cancel the sales contract. Sellers, listen to me. If you're given serious consideration to sell in your home, you should really take the time to walk around your property inside and out and take note of everything that you can fix and just do it. Yeah. Exactly. That Chuck just said, please, please listen to us. And when he says everything, he means even minor things. For example, most people, you know, we live in Florida. There's a lot of rain and moisture have wood rotting around their garage doors. You have hanging gutters because people put them up. But let's face it, most people that we go to their homes don't clean them out. Right. So when we walk up, we see leaves and pine needles, all kinds of things sticking out of them. There's cracks in the walls or your foundation outside, leaks, or even evidence of past leaks that were legitimately repaired, but, you know, it left a discoloration on the interior ceiling. We have GFIs that don't work, or there are even homes here that are so old that GFIs weren't even built at that time, but you should still consider installing them because these are things that will make a buyer reject your home. Yes, it's important that you, the homeowner, put yourself in the place of the buyer. Pretend You are now out looking at, you know, possibly a new home. Mm -hmm. The very things that you won't accept in another home are the same things you need to be proactive about addressing in your own home. Amen. That's so true, Chuck. And that honey-do list that we keep asking you guys to do for us, it just keeps growing and growing. And you know, you guys, you mean well, you know, I'm going to get to it, babe, this week and whatever. Well, that list, it's time for you guys as sellers to get on that before you put the home on the market, please, not after or during, because let's face it, the same things that stopped you or prevented you from doing that list to begin with, what are the odds that you're going to do it in a couple of weeks before we possibly get a buyer? Yep. Right. So if you're unsure if you should repair something, we encourage you to call us, the board's team. Uh, You can find our information on our website, again, boardsrealestateteam.com, and you'll find our phone number. You can get us on Facebook and also Instagram, and you can email us and discuss your particular issues with us, and we will be happy to give you our professional advice on how you should proceed with whatever's going on with your home before we put it on the market. Yeah, and if you don't have the time to do this stuff yourself, then consider having a pre-inspection so that you can fix it or address problems before the official inspection. Right. Now... That does not mean that you will have to go around repairing every little thing that is wrong. That's not what we're saying. There are some items that can be negotiated or handled in the offer or even in the list price. So if you have a major appliance that's already broken or a roof that's leaking, etc., there are ways that we can handle these problems before you put the property on the market. Just reach out to us again, as I mentioned before, 
through email, social media, or even, yes, the telephone, and discuss your unique problems with us. All right, well, let's face it, too. Not everyone has the funds to repair what's wrong with their home, but that does not mean the property is not saleable as is. Right, as is with the right to inspect. So what are some important things, Chuck, that you think home sellers should consider in preparing for a home inspection? Well, first, if the house is empty, leave. you got to leave the utilities on. you got to leave your pilot light lit. Uh, the reason for that is that buyers will look at your home at all hours, mm-hmm. you know, and so it must be illuminated. Right. you got to have electricity. And those utilities must be on for the inspectors also when they do their inspections and for final walkthrough. Right. That's great advice because you'd be surprised how many people think if they leave. They can turn everything on. Yeah. And it does work because you will now incur the cost of having to put turn everything back on with the utility company. So leave everything on as far as your utilities. What's another thing? Well, as we said before about doing your own little checklist. Uh, Make sure that all electrical sockets, light fixtures, switches, and fans work. Uh, Small things. Run around, see if there are items that don't work. We'll ask you to detail them on a seller's disclosure for the new buyer. And that helps to ease the jolt of what's wrong with the house. So if if you know the fan in the third bedroom doesn't work, the ceiling fan, Then put it on your seller's disclosure. Right. And that way it's not one more thing on the, well, the fan doesn't work in the third bedroom. (laughs) Right. You know, people would be surprised. No, and it is. absolutely how it happens. Small things that add up and make a buyer just go, okay, you know, I'm done with this house. Yep. So like Chuck said, it helps to ease the jolt a little, even if it's broken and you can't fix it. The fact that you let them know up front prior to the inspection can help a lot. Another thing is we want to confirm that the smoke and the carbon monoxide detectors are working. Ours are. Right. (laughs) Yeah. 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 You You would be surprised (laughs) at how many people have removed the batteries from the older model smoke detectors or don't have any at all in their home. And a carbon monoxide detector is so affordable right now that even if you don't have one, you really should consider installing one. You can find them on Amazon or in your local hardware store. Yeah. And you can also check that all your faucets and toilets are all running and operating properly and free of leaks. And there's nothing that will kill a deal quicker than leaks in a house. Amen. Yeah. Leaks can be fixed, but then it brings up the question of mold and issues like that. So we want to avoid water problems at all costs. Yes, absolutely. And the next thing I would say is to clean your stove and your oven, please. When buyers are at your inspection, they will take even more time to really truly investigate the home more so than they did at the showing because the showing is usually pretty quick. They're seeing quite a few homes and then they choose yours. But When they go back to inspection, they really start to look at every little nook and cranny. So they will open the refrigerators, the oven, microwaves, cabinets, Mm -hmm. closets, etc. And if they see filth, they begin to wonder if you may have a rodent or bug problem. You may want to not um, have them think that because even if it's not true, you're planning the idea of that. So you want to clean up. You do not want to plant the negative ideas in a buyer's head. And plus, you don't want the smoke from a dirty stove or oven being set off in the fire alarm when it's being tested. Oh, <laughs> We've had that happen as well. So that's another, I think, tip that we hope you find useful. Uh, again, we're going to check uh, all your doors, windows, that they operate smoothly that they can open and close properly, and that the hardware, you know, isn't missing or broken. Um, this, These are little simple things, but most people don't even think about it. Um, and I, to be honest, a lot of people try to hide it. and it's, You're not going to hide it from a good inspector. No. You just, you know. Uh, so don't let something small be an issue in your inspection report. Too many small, nitpicky things just show a lack of pride of ownership. Exactly. So... The next tip I have is a lot of us homeowners here have fireplaces with chimneys. Make sure that you clear any obstructions in the chimney as well as around your furnace, water heaters, and your access to the attic. You want the inspector to be able to get up to these places very quickly and efficiently. Well, I got a good one. Another thing is that here locally in Denellon area, we have, or even in North Central Florida, we have a lot of outbuildings. So be sure to leave keys for the outbuildings the exterior electrical boxes with your your realtor uh, or 
if there's, we have one now that there's a certain place to keys in for all the realtors. You don't want the buyers to have to come back another day because the inspector couldn't get into those prop, the bare areas. Right, exactly. And also another thing that you want to do is gather any documents for any renovations or repairs that have been made since you've owned the property. And if you had something from the prior owner too, as far as renovations, it, it, that would be nice to have. If you built the home yourself, like we did, then you want to leave a set of blueprints out for the buyers and the inspectors to see. These documents will help answer questions about construction, additions, um, how they were done, what kind of building materials were used. Buyers just want to know when the repairs or any type of construction or alterations to the home was done and if permits were pulled. So it's nice to have those all gathered up on the table. They're oh, not yeah. going to be taken away. No. It's just going to be sitting there for information purposes during the home and inspection. It really eases them. It eases yep. the buyers because you're being open and saying, here's everything. Right. It makes them feel good. It surely does. Um, another thing I'd say is remove brush and debris from the exterior inspection points. Uh, that means if you have bushes around, uh, your air conditioning or gutters need to be clean. Something that a lot of people neglect doing. You know, you got to get those things taken care of and cleaned out before you put your home on the market or at least before your home inspection. Yeah, that's a good one. A lot of people miss that. Another thing a lot of property owners here have are septic tanks and well systems. Mm -hmm. You should provide a sketch, you know, just hand drawn, showing the location of it on the property. That way, the inspectors have to run around trying to figure out where it is. Okay, so you want to show them on a quick sketch of the property where the septic tank and the wells are located. And if you have records of any maintenance that you've done to them, you want to leave those out as well. Very good. Now, I'm going to give you a touchy one here. Ooh. Um, pets. Oh, no. Yes, and we love our pets. Yeah, we have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but you should either remove the pets or crate them, no matter how friendly they are, not everyone likes animals. Yeah, I know. It's I know. hard to it's believe. Hard, it's hard to believe. Yeah. But um, it's just the best for all. So inspectors, buyers, and the buyer's agent, you know. just Yeah, just put them up, people. And trust me, we're animal lovers. We have, what, six dogs, a pet skunk, a bird, and a cat. And I'm sure I'll talk them into something else soon. But so I, I know and ours are loose. We feel like they're people. They can run free and they are friendly for the most part. However, like you said, it's not a matter of friendliness. People just don't like animals. Some people just don't like it. And some people are allergic too. Like yeah, to that's true. Or something, so. Right. So, well, and then what, what do we got here? And so now that we, I think those were 12 good tips we just gave you. So, but what we want to do the next one is something. And, and I know a lot of sellers don't like this, but it really is something you really need to do. You need a plan to be away from your home for a minimum of at least three hours during the inspection. Many sellers want to stay during the home inspection because, you know, you want to find out what they're what they find or you want to give an explanation for it. But it really is best if you leave. The reason is you want to allow the buyer to feel as if they're living in the home to kind of start taking that sense of ownership, walking around. And then you want them to be able to be free to speak about something that might have popped up with the inspection report with their inspector without you feeling offended. Right. Right. And so because You're it's trying to hide in the back. Right. Hallway. It's it's just trust us. It's just yeah. not good juju. No, it's not. <laughs> you just need to leave the home. Remember, you're trying to sell the home and you're emotionally attached to it. So it can sometimes hurt feelings when someone says something negative that you didn't perceive as a negative with the property. And inevitably when we have to come back to the negotiation table for repairs you kind of, even though you may not want to admit it, it sticks in your head what the person says, and it makes a renegotiating process of keeping the property intact more difficult because of what you might have heard the buyer or buyer say during the inspection. Correct, and you then the emotions start getting into play, mm -hmm. and then uh, then we got then we got problems. Exactly. Well, we hope that these thirteen tips have been helpful to you, home sellers out there, or future home sellers. And as always, we would love to hear from you, our listeners, about topics that you would like for us to address on our podcast. Now, if you have a unique home inspection story or added suggestions about something, we, again, encourage you to participate in our blog on our website. So feel free to go there, BortsRealEstateTeam.com, and find the podcast or blog story you want to leave a comment about. And join in on the conversation. Yes, please do. That's what it's there for. And everybody wants to be 
you know, part of the community and want to be involved. And we really want our website to be almost like a mini Facebook, but without the drama where you can share stories about real estate and have other people suggest things for you. And it, it just becomes a real nice community feel. And again, it's sportsrealestateteam.com. So we've reached the end of another episode of the podcast. We want to thank you guys all again so much for listening this year. And remember, you can listen on any podcatcher of your choice. You can download or listen on iTunes, Blurberry, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, and even on our website. And we want to keep bringing you this show. So please share the link with your friends and family on social media and subscribe so you never miss another episode. That's right. And again, happy holidays. Uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And, and listen, we want to say again, we're starting to get to know the community. People are recognizing us. Of course, they always recognize Amory Service Dog, the Pink Poodle. <laughs> um, so you see us out and about, say hello. Yes, please do. And if you ever have any real estate questions, like we said, you can ask us in person or email or reach out to us. We're here to help you. It's not always about a dollar figure, it's about helping our community you know, get the most we can in, in establishing as reestablishing since the market crash, our sales and, and um, increasing what our property is worth here. So we're always here for you, no matter what. Again, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and we will see you guys in 2019. God bless you. God bless. You've just listened to the Bortz Real Estate Team podcast with your hosts, Chuck and Anne-Marie. Subscribe to the podcast so you never miss another episode. Follow us on Instagram at The Bortz Team and follow us on Twitter at Bortz Real Estate. Be sure to visit BortzRealEstateTeam.com to join the conversation, read the blog, access the show notes, and reach out to us if you're interested in selling or buying a home in the greater Ocala and Denellum, Florida area. Until next time.